Welcome to Bizjet TV. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the airlines reducing the requirements uh, for recruitment for pilots because of the pilot shortage. Now, uh, we're going to talk about these parameters. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And so if you haven't subscribed to Bizjet TV, this channel is all about business aviation. Lots of information here, not only about business aviation, aviation in general, space, um, what's happening moving forward, uh, interviews with aircraft owners, and, and lots of other good content. Also remember to read my articles in Afbio magazine that published every month. You can see the link below. Let's get into today's episode. My name is Fabrizio Polymer, your aviation advisor, and let's get into the meat of the episode today. So now in the United States of America, um, in order to join an airline, there is a minimum requirement of hours that someone needs to have, which is 1500 hours and an airline transport pilot's license. Um, and up until recently, they were also required to have a university degree or college degree, as you call it over in the States. Now, um, in Europe, the uh, situation is a bit different. Uh, people are hired to fly for the airlines with even 250 hours and without a college degree. Uh, but the training is done differently. So I want to talk about the difference in training and what I've experienced having worked with both pilots that have gone through the American system and also the European system and, and what I think you know works and what doesn't work. The other thing the airlines are doing to try and cater for the pilot shortage is increase the retirement age from 65 to 67 years old, which I think is a good idea. There's lots of pilots that even in their 70s are super fit. A dear friend of mine, he got his 5.7x tight rating at the age of 74. But this guy, you know, he does his yoga every morning. He eats healthily. He really does look after himself. He's not only physically fit, but also his mind. And so there's no reason why somebody like that shouldn't be flying, you know, with the wealth of experience that they have. That they can, you know, um, uh, teach the, the young ones that are coming up. Um, I think there's value there. And when you operate your own private jet, uh, you know, and it's operated privately, so part 91, not 135, you can pick the pilot. The pilot can be, even be 90 years old. It's really down to you. And I think having an experienced pilot in the left-hand seat as the captain is always a good thing. Um, and then a young, a young man sitting next to him that can be, you know, taught the ropes by someone with lots of experience is always a good, good mix. But let's talk about, you know, the pilot... Um, the requirements in America, you know, 1500 hours, they're going to reduce that to 750 hours. Is that good or is that bad? Now, um, often enough, you know, people are impressed by number of hours that pilots have. But, you know, when I was flying for a low cost airline in the UK, we were hiring guys straight out of flight school. Um, so what they did is they did their basic commercial uh, license uh, or their frozen ATPL license. So they did all the subjects for the airline transport pilots license. So they learned all that knowledge. Uh, they did all their training, and then when they completed the basic commercial pilot training, they did what's called an MCC course, which is a multi-crew coordination course, or jet orientation course, as you would call it in the US. And you basically put um, uh, this guy in, in a simulator, a, a mock-up simulator of like a 737 or an Airbus 320, so a, an airliner jet simulator, together with somebody else. Now, up until now, they've been trained to fly on their own to get their licenses. Uh, and now you put them in an environment where not only are they working with somebody else and they have to you learn what's called crew, re crew resource management. Um, so learning to work with somebody else in the cockpit. But they also have to learn how to fly this big airliner. So they go through some ground school. Uh, they go through some simulator training. It's what's called a fixed base simulator. So it's not a full motion simulator. And they learn the checklist. They learn call outs. They learn to work together. They learn the different profiles of how this jet works. And then once they complete that course, they then go to uh, onto what's called a type rating course. Now, the difference in Europe uh, with the type rating courses, the captain and the first officer go through exactly the same course and exactly the same exam. And they're tested to exactly the same parameters. In the United States, you have what's called a tight rating as a PIC, pilot in command, and a tight rating as an SIC or second in command. Now, the second in command course, the standards are different and also the syllabus is different to the curriculum that you follow for the captain's rating. But the way we see it here in Europe is that, you know, the first officer is the vice captain or the deputy captain, however you want to call it. And, you know, and if a pilot incapacitation happens and a lot of this situations have been happening recently, just an easy jet aircraft landed just the other day in Edinburgh because the captain was incapacitated. So the first officer had to fly and land the airplane on his own. So you really have to think of that as well. So you really want your co-pilot trained to the same standards as your captain. Yes, your captain will have more experience, but this is important. So when I'm looking at hours and, and in America, a lot of what people do is they get their commercial pilot's license, then they get their what, CFI and CFW, which is commercial flight instructor, a commercial flight instructor instrument, and then their MEI, multi-engine instrument. And they sit 
in the right hand seat, teaching people to fly, teaching them to fly instruments and for their commercial pilot's license. And that's how they clock their hours up to then get 1500 hours and then join the airlines. And while they're doing that, maybe they get a college degree. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that that pilot with 1500 hours is gonna be better than the pilot with 300 hours that went through a different system. Because it's not so much the hours, it's the quality of the training and the type of training that has been done. So um, this is really, really important, as well as you know the aptitude of the pilot uh, itself, which, which is important. So lowering the requirement for uh, pilots to get into the airlines, in particular the United States, um, is not a bad thing as long as the quality of the hours is increased. So when I'm looking at a pilot's CV, I look at what type of school have they been to, what type of training or flying have they done after that, and who have they worked for, um, because this will tell you a lot about the quality of their hours. And that's really, really important. Now, when you get on an airline and you're flying with these airlines now that are going to bring the requirement down from 1,500 to 750 hours, I mean, are these pilots going to be safer? I honestly don't know. And this is where there's another uh, pro for, you know, plus for um, flying private is if you're flying by private jet and you own the jet, you also control the pilots. And so you can have somebody vet the pilots and make sure that you hire some you know, pilots with certain that have gone through certain type of experience and training and that you provide high quality training. That's really, really important. We're going to be doing a number of videos uh, in the next few weeks about pilot training. And I'll be showing you new technology that's come on board that can help you improve the quality of the training of your own pilots, which I think is really, really important. I mean, let's face it, you're buying your own jet. You're spending 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 50 million dollars on a jet. You want to make sure that the guys up front know what they're doing. So you want them rested, you want them well trained, you want them well experienced. You don't want to tick all these boxes and it's really, really important. And you want to obviously pay them well because today with the pilot shortage, guys are jumping ship, salaries are on the increase. Um, and as I always say, the private jet needs to stay private. So you want your pilots to come and stay with you for a long time. And the only way you can do that is to treat them well. And part of treating them well is not only paying them well and giving them adequate time, F time off, but also uh, giving them uh, the training, you know, more training, which is really important. And I don't know how many times I've emphasized this on these videos on BizJet TV. But again, I can only give out general information here. So just to recap, uh, the airlines are going to be bringing down the requirements for pilots to join. Um, they're going to be increasing the re retirement age, which I think is really, really good. And I have nothing against that. I am a little bit against reducing the hours because more than reducing the hours, I would say let's look at the quality of hours and the type of training that these people have been through. I think that's far more important. As far as the degree is concerned, you don't need to have a degree to fly a jet uh, as long as the person you know, has some life experience. I mean, I wouldn't say promoting a 22-year-old or 23-year-old as a captain. I think you know they need a bit more life experience and university doesn't necessarily give you life experience. It gives you book experience. But as you may have experienced in your own company, and companies now like to hire people that have taken a year off and travel around the world because they say an 18 year old that leaves high school and then travels around the world for a year or two and works different places and that and then comes into the, the workforce is a lot more prepared for the workforce than someone that goes to university. And a number of people have seen this. I mean, we even see Elon Musk where he said, you know, for me to hire someone in my company, I don't care what qualifications they have. They sit down with me and they're given five problems. And if they can solve those problems, they're hired. I don't care if they learn to solve those problems in their own garage or at MIT. It doesn't matter. I don't care if they're 50 years old, they're black, white, gay, straight. I don't care. I give them five problems to solve. And if they can solve those problems, they're hired. So this is really, at the end of the day, let's not be impressed by people's qualifications, by number of hours and, and years of experience doing things. Because you can have 20 years experience playing golf, but playing golf badly. And there's some guy come along that's only been playing golf for a year, but he had the right instruction. He got custom fit clubs. You know, he approached it in a different way. He got fit. He, he stretched. He did yoga. He did a number of things, which this guy that's been playing for 20 years hasn't done. And guess what? He's a better golfer. So it's the same with piloting. You need quality. Quality is key, not quantity. So let's look at that. So if you are hiring pilots now for your private jet and you don't quite know where to go, um, I encourage you to ping me an email or 
go to my website and fill in the form. Let's get on a one-to-one -one call. I can help you hire the right pilots. If you haven't got a plane yet, I can help you find the right plane and also hire the pilots. It's all sorts of stuff that we do here because on here on BizJet TV, I can only give out general information. We need to get specific, specific for you. And so I encourage you to do that. If you haven't subscribed to BizJet TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and uh, click on the notification bell. So every time we publish new content, it will let you know. And also uh, click on the link below to go to Buyer Magazine website and check out my articles. I've done quite a few doing a series now on private jet owners, did a whole series on electrical vertical takeoff and landing and other things, which I'm sure you'll find interesting because the purchase of a private jet is a technical purchase. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be comfortable with what you're doing. So, you know, reading up on a few things before you speak to somebody like myself is certainly something I encourage everybody to do. And again, subscribe to BizJet TV and check this video out about the Falcon 10X new airplane that Dassault is developing. Interesting one there for you. And that's all from Fabrizio Poli on BizJet TV. And I'll see you on the next one.